The other day I was watching a video and they were kind of uh, they were kind of saying that swells don't work but for some reason they must not have overseeded their berms and I'll do some I'll do a cutaway to some images that we took right when we built these just to show you a comparison but look if you don't overseed your berms then they're going to sit out in the sun and bake and turn into at least here in Missouri they'll turn into something like terracotta and they're not going to be they're really not going to be useful at all but here's one of the trees that we put in last year but look look at this growth I mean this is wild stuff but the only reason that this wild stuff can get any purchase is because of what we did initially where we went ahead and overseeded with e-balm, lemon balm, yarrow and a mixture of cone flour. So this is Queen Anne's lace, most of this and some of this other stuff is uh, daisy fleabane and this is all wild. And this is just what you can see. I'm not here to grow a, a flower garden, but this is part of the succession of this. So I'm going to just go down in here and let you see what's going on this second year. And, and you can see the denseness of this biomass that's here. And now we're getting toward the berm. And you can see the ground cover down there. This is yarrow. Uh, some of these other things, I don't even know what they are because they're, they're just, they're native herbs. Would essentially be called weeds anywhere else. But all this stuff is just giving this, and this was, this was just clay down here. I mean, this whole uh, swell was, was essentially clay, but you can see there's, there's already some soil here. It's not great, but as you can see, things are growing, and all this stuff is going to add to the biomass while this thing's trying to get established and here's a tree one of our this is our main support species this is a false indigo amorpha fruticosa and we'll chop and drop this this is nitrogen fixture we'll chop and drop this i'm already experimenting with some uh pollarding of these trees and this is small but yeah, it's getting it's getting decent size for a second year tree. There's some lemon balm right there, and it grows just as happy as you please down there in the the shade. And these are some of the same cone flowers that self seeded from last year. This is some of the native wildflowers. This is a Wild carrot. This is the uh, Queen Anne's lace. The bird nest features. Uh, this is a this is a bull thistle that's going to seed. I'm not completely. No, that's actually I don't know exactly what that is. It's a thistle of some sort. It's not a bull thistle. Um, but. I'm going to get carried off by ticks in here, probably, but this is important. So you can see the amount of biomass that's here on top of this berm, which would have otherwise just have been a bald hill out here. There you can see, there's the swale. That's the ditch on contour. I've put trees on the other side, too. Those are more of the um, support species, the false indigo. 
Now this thing, there's some grass here. You know, you're not gonna, it's not, it won't be exactly what you want it to be because it's a natural system. But you want these things to come into the party because they're doing, they're doing the work you need for free. So just be aware that when you put in your swells, you've got to get something on top of that bare earth right away. Because if you leave it the chance, you may get enough weeds in there, but if you leave it the chance, and depending on which season you're in, which I if I were going to start a swell system, I'd do it in spring because it's probably the wettest point of the year and it's also the time when things are going to try to get a toehold. By summer, it's too hot. At least it is here. And it'd be risky. The fall is a possibility, but I wouldn't try it. I hope you found this video useful and informative and from the sweltering Ozark Prairie. Thanks for watching.